Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mic Check Podcast. This is T Word, the People's Champ, here with my co host Q. Today, we're going to talk about a big super fight, in my opinion, that's going to be delayed because an injury came up. Um, we're going to talk about Stephen Fulton and Noya Anyway, who were supposed to tangle on May 7th. But before yeah. we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate the feedback. So, Q. Yeah. Man, I'm sad, bro. Yeah. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. A little I, bit. Anyway. I, was, I was looking forward to this. I mean, we, we got some good boxing coming up over the next six it's gonna weeks. It's going to be a great weekend, was, man. You get boxing, yeah, for sure. and boxing in the morning, man. It was going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, but now we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, I believe they've already got a date, but for those that are just kind of tapping in and really tuning in with their earbuds, uh, Stefan Fulton and Noya Inouye were supposed to scrap on May 7th in Japan, and unfortunately, Inouye had to pull out. I've seen two different reports. One says there was something going on with his knee, and another says his hand. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, it sounds like it's minor because Stefan Fulton has already assured fans that they have another date, and a lot of people are talking about summer uh unofficially my sources say summer so that means it's, it's something like because summer's june july so yeah. looks like we're not gonna have to wait too long for it um what are your thoughts about it man um as far as this injury and the delay and everything yeah obviously it's unfortunate news to hear because you know that run of fights and i've mentioned it even on twitter and i'm sure you've seen it uh the tweet i put out a couple of weeks ago about the great run of fights that we're, we were scheduled to have between April 1st when Anthony Joshua was fighting, capping off and ending with this fight May 7th, the first week of May, was going to be a lot of great fights. Uh, but I guess that is the one good thing to look forward to is that while we are losing this fight as a part of that run of schedules back to back, um, it is something like you mentioned that Stephen Fulton has already got an agreed date uh, to replace the postponement, which mm -hmm. is a good sign. Um, and I think that ultimately what you want in this fight is you want both guys to be at as close to full strength as possible. You go through an sure. eight or nine week camp, injuries, nicks, you know, you know, bruises things happen. Things happen that are minor. But if it's mm -hmm. something that's going to inhibit one fighter from being as close at 100 percent as possible, it's not the right time to have that fight. And, and honestly, it's better that it gets called off now at a point where you know, uh, Stefan hasn't flown over there. Mm -hmm. He has, you know, paid, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to get his team or whatever his nutrition is, whatever he needs transitioned right. over there because of the time change. Um, so it's probably better on both ends for both fighters uh, that the announcement comes this this soon, uh, over almost, yeah. almost three weeks in advance. Yeah, um, sure. But as far as the fight, man, it's going to happen. So that's great news to look forward to. Um, and it possibly now is a situation where maybe uh, maybe it comes at a time when we needed big fights because there have not been a lot of announcements for summer fights yet. So we know we can look forward to this. One. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it might be doing us a favor uh, because we if does feels like everything's been sandwiched and like a six to eight week window. So this is going to give us the opportunity to get something something tasty in the summer when a lot of times it kind of dries up. So this is going to be a great fight to see. I did hear that, number one, um, in a way, actually wanted to continue. But at doctor's advice, he was told he should probably step out, um, which is smart. And like you said, um, we want them as close to 100 percent as possible. And this also gives a little bit more time between Ramadan uh, for for Fulton as well. So we we do get an opportunity to see more than likely the best version possible of these two besides regular nicks and bumps sure. in um in a training camp now one thing i want to address before we close the video is uh i got this issue man okay so i've seen it in the comments i've seen it on twitter you know that's mm -hmm. where we get a lot of conversation on yeah on yeah. boxing and um people are basically kind of putting out steroid allegations on and Noye, and I just don't like this. I don't like no, unfounded man. stuff. He doesn't have an extraordinary physique. He didn't overnight become this muscular dude. He's not even a big mascot. No. So when you look at him, just because he's knocking people out, I just I don't like that. You know, I'm a fan of Earl Spence, and he's been getting them allegations, and I'm like, all right, but he's he's never complained about testing. He's never tested dirty, and he hasn't had any issues actually making weight on the scale and Noye hasn't ever missed weight um you know as far I mean he he had a little struggle in his very last fight but he knew he was moving up right after he already had plans to get to 22. that being said 
I had somebody actually say, why is he able to move up weight at 29? Do they know what age Terrence Crawford was when he moved from 40 to 47? This is the <laughs> stupidest thing I've ever heard, you know? And, and I hate to pull the card like, hey, I'm a personal trainer, so I know, but I'm a personal trainer, so I know about weight management. Yeah. It's what I do. And I just hate when people can't wrap their mind around something that's just not the basics or they don't have enough information. So I just want to say to the people out there, man, if he says he's injured, we have no reason to question that. Mm -hmm. I didn't question Jamel Charlo when he came up injured. Mm -hmm. I didn't question Canelo Alvarez, um, Amanda Serrano. I'm not going to question Noe anyway, no matter who I think is going to win the fight, because as a fighter or as a fight fan, I want to see the best in there at the best they can be on fight night. So I kind of wanted to just get that off my chest, man, because that shit makes me sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well said, man. I mean, unfortunately, um, for some bad reasons, you know, uh, boxing is a very tribalistic sport and the tribalistic portion of it is what makes it great and entertaining and makes great rivalries whether you're talking about mexico puerto rico whether mm -hmm. you're talking about italian versus african-american in the mm -hmm. 80s if you're talking about you know um japanese versus chinese boxers that's those are great rivalries in the sport to have mm -hmm. um where you root for your side not root for my side but the unfortunate right. part is is when it, it crosses over into uh, um, convicting people of things that are baseless, right? For I sure. mean, if Noya anyway was ducking drug tests, if he wasn't fighting in the clean boxing program as a way to fight for the WBC uh, title, uh, mm -hmm. that has Do you really think that Stephen Fulton would have signed any kind of contract? Do you think right. he would have traveled to Japan? Do you think that he would have crossed over to another network? If any of this stuff that people are suggesting is even remotely true, I wouldn't yeah. think so. It, it, it'd be too much of a risk against a guy who's already a powerful puncher, a guy who's mm -hmm. cleaned out two and three weight divisions, essentially. Um, that's not something that he would voluntarily do for any amount of money. Uh, people mm -hmm. die in that ring. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for people to say that is is, is unfortunate and it's, it's wrong, it's unfair. I mean, it kind of goes back to the same thing that, you know, Jarrell Miller, when he accused Anthony Joshua of being on steroids before their scheduled fight got canceled because he popped dirty for not only the third time, the third time in his career, uh, but he was the one, you know, accusing other people. So people definitely need to be careful with, with swinging that, uh, that rumor around when there's, there's no facts base to it. Unfortunately, injuries happen. There's mm -hmm. a lot of other reasons that we can talk about and probably in a separate video as to why so many boxers are getting injured. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is that they're overtraining and not fighting often enough. The more that you train, the more that you do the same things over and over, a lot of fighters will tell you, the hardest part about being a boxer is not getting in the ring and fighting, it's the training camps, yeah. you know? And, and when you're constantly having to train, that can sometimes lead to overuse and a lot of injuries. So. Unfortunate news, but the great news is, is the fight is still going to happen. For sure. I still want the fight, so I to that thing. And hopefully it is a fight that happens in June, and hopefully they can have the Spence Crawford fight in June, and then they can have Fulton in, in a way in, in June, and that, that'll be an awesome uh, two-fight deal. That'll be a good month. Yeah, that'll be a good month. And, and if they're on different weekends, even better, give you something to look forward to and digest and analyze in between. So, folks, we'd love to get your comments on this. Hey, whether you agree or disagree, that's okay. This has been the Mic Check Podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is T. That's Q. Until the next time, we're out. Peace.